Royal Caribbean has announced a new dining venue on board one of its ships. Virgin Voyages have changed their repositioning crews. And a not so perfect day on Coco Cay. Find out all about that news next. Hi guys, it's Shipface here and this is this week's cruise news. Just before we get into the news, if you could go down and press that subscribe button, it would be very much appreciated and it really does help me out. Now let's get into the news. The first news story this week is that it was not a perfect day at Coco Cay. No, it really wasn't. I've seen, seen some videos online and it was like, so that it was waste of the season, freedom of the season. Everyone was just enjoying their day on perfect day as, as they do. Um, and the media guy, you can follow the guy on Twitter, I can't remember what exactly what his name is, alerted the ships Oasis and Freedom to get their all their passengers on and that there was a storm or bad weather coming. So to evacuate the island. And yeah, so that's what they did. And like I saw some videos and literally, if you're not familiar with Perfect Day, but like there's the island and then they built like a, ma- like a really big pier that the ships dock on. And basically waves were going over that and um, basically a waste of the seas, if we, we, you, or you guys know, it's one of the world's largest cruise ships. It basically used, they used that as a wind blocker so freedom of the seas could get out. But then basically a waste of the seas tried to get out three times and basically the wind was just pushing it back to the pier. Um, so they didn't leave till about three, four in the morning. But yeah, it just shows how quickly the weather can turn in, in, the, in the Caribbean or Caribbean, depending <laughs> on where you're from. Um, so... Yeah, it was. It's just it was quite um, cool. scary. Well, cool, <laughs> cool to see. Just well, not for people on board, but hopefully everyone got their refund. Um, because obviously they, they weren't. It's not cheap that perfect day island. So people searching in the water park and stuff to see if they get a percentage of their money back, depending on how much yeah. they actually used it. But yeah, hopefully the island is intact. It looked quite a, quite a windy storm kind of thing. I don't know exactly, but yeah, not so perfect day on Coco Cay. Royal Caribbean has announced a brand new dining experience on board Utopia of the Seas. This is called the Royal Railway Utopia Station. So this is like an all-in immersive experience which combines adventure and food. So it's the ultimate dining experience. So you go into a train carriage that screens all around you. So it's completely immersive. And you're travelling through times like the Wild West and where else? So yeah, basically just you go through different times and i would assume they haven't given many details about the restaurant or what the menu is going to be but i assume like the food will match where you're going so like you said the wild west at the base that's one of the places they've said they've not said they said any date and time so i'm assuming they've just said that one and you're going to really big significant times throughout your dining experience and like i said i i would assume the food matches up to where you're going yeah so it's yeah, they say it's a one of a kind, and this just shows some of the um, what Royal Caribbean is designing and what they're thinking about. It's a bit annoying it's not on Icon of the Seas because I thought this is a kind of new idea, but maybe they're trying it on the six. Or, this is the last Oasis class, so they're yeah. trying it on the last one. But it it does sound awesome, like being able to eat your food and like see lots of cool places go past. Yeah, so it's something got, I definitely want to try. Yes, yeah, so you've got no ocean views; it's literally just screens. So it's basically they've basically built like a carriage. So you'll see pictures while we're talking. Um, and yeah, it looks really cool, detailed, and yeah, it just shows you the um, the new innovative things Royal Caribbean are trying to do. Um, like I said, they've not given any um, menu or price, so that will come in the future. I'll keep an eye when they do finally release the price of it, but it does look a really cool experience. If you've been watching my news over the past couple of weeks, you'll know about Icon of the Season, how much like... Um, stuff they've been doing with Messi being there and the um, announcement for Inter Miami and Royal Caribbean. And because I did say that was one of my best partnerships, I got one of the shirts. <laughs> this is the away one. It's got Royal Caribbean's logo right there. Wait, it's, 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 okay. anyway, cover your face. There you go. Yep. Uh, the um, yeah, Royal Caribbean logo. I got Messi on the back, of course. Who, are, who else would I get? Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it's a really nice top. I'll be wearing this as I go on board the icon of the season in September. We're going to buy you the pink one at some point. Uh, but yeah, it's just really cool. It says like Freedom to Dream on the back. But yeah, I, just, I love the Royal Caribbean logo and that will go amazing in my shirt collection. Uh, so that is another thing into the memorabilia collection. The next news story is that Virgin Voyages have tweaked their itinerary on board Resilient Lady. So yeah, this has been completely changed. It was going from Sydney, March 27th, all the way to Athens. So a really big itinerary. 
Um, and it was going to go through like Singapore, the Middle East, and it end up in um, Athens. But obviously due to what's going on in the world, it can't go through the Middle East. So they completely changed the whole, so it was a uh, whole um, voyage. So it was like like different legs, we could pick the whole one, like kind of like a world kind of cruise, but just a really big uh, repositioning cruise. Um, so it's now doing a few stops in Australia, going down the whole of South Africa, so like Cape Town and a few different places, which is kind of cool because you wouldn't normally do this cruise. So it's kind of a not once in the once in the once in a life lifetime. Also, there you go. That's it. <laughs> a once in a lifetime cruise, but it's it's a different material that you wouldn't usually do. So if you are booked on the original one and they've changed it to that one, I don't think it's that bad of. Um, no, it's, it idea. sounds like quite nice places to go and visit. So yeah, you're doing South Africa where Dubai, once all this stuff calms down eventually in a couple of years, but maybe that, that, that route is always on. So um, hopefully the um, yeah you get some cool experiences and you stay booked on that cruise because I think it's, it's a good change. So yeah, it goes to South Africa, does lots of stops in there, Tenerife, and then goes into the Mediterranean and does end in Athens. They have not announced a date yet for Athens for when the cruise finishes. Um, I think they're still trying to finish off and tweak how many nights it's going to be. But yeah, it, um, as much as the other, the first cruise sounded amazing, going to Singapore, um, it was going to India as well, and then it was going to Dubai. Obviously, it was going to go to Egypt um, and see the pyramids and stuff. Might not get to see that, but I think seeing a different part of the world is still a very cool cruise. So yeah, that is what Virgin Voyages have tweaked on Resilient Lady. Royal Caribbean has cancelled and changes some of the cruises on Ovation of the Seas in 2025. So yeah, there is a lot to look at with this one. They've only cancelled and rescheduled three cruises. It seems like a lot of information here. So they've cancelled the 3rd, the 12th and 29th of April in 2025. And basically it will do a seven night um, Brisbane cruise and then it will go from, go from Sydney. So I think it's got like a two night cruise. And then it will go to... So the 12th of April, they have... The cruise they've changed it to is a 21-night transatlantic cruise to Hawaii. Sydney to Hawaii, stopping in places like French Pauline, French Polynesia. Polynesia. That's it. Bora Bora. And, <laughs> and New Zealand, so it sounds like a really cool cruise, like 21 nights. Um, so then that is for the ones for the 12th of April. And then for the 3rd and the 29th, they have put on a eight-night Hawaiian cruise. So I don't know how that helps people in, in the 3rd of April, but um, so yeah, so it will do that eight nights Hawaiian cruise and then end up in Vancouver in Canada, ready for its Alaska season. So yeah, lots of changes and information, but they will, um, they've emailed all the guests and people have options of full cancellation or be moving on to the other cruises. Definitely, if, I, if I'm going to be put onto a 21 night transatlantic cruise that goes to Bora Bora, <laughs> I, I don't know who would decline that one unless they don't have the holiday. Yeah. Um, that cruise does. Is it a price difference? No, if they can't change it, um, then no, it should be free of charge. Because there was even one time, a little story, we, my family, it's before I knew you, um, we were booked on a one week cruise on Anthem of the Seas, uh, going out of Southampton, and they cancelled the cruise afterwards. And made our cruise a two week cruise and they gave us the whole week for free. The cruise never actually happened due to COVID, unfortunately, but we were, everyone oh. who was booked on that one week cruise got a whole week on board of Royal Caribbean ship for free. If you had booked drinks packages, they would have. Why did it change? Because well, basically they didn't have a two week cruise, so obviously people complained. Oh. That's why, that's why I think Independence may get a two week cruise because people may complain, but I don't, it depends if Royal Caribbean care enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically, if you bought a drink package already, they will just honour it for the whole two weeks, Wi-Fi for the whole two weeks. That's cool. They they basically, and, but obviously it changed a lot of their itinerary. Oh, we didn't mind because we prefer to Yeah, cruise. exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah, it was really um, um, quite cool. But the, also the problem was as well, we actually booked two back-to-back -back cruises and they cancelled the third one, so we were basically on the ship for almost three weeks. But yeah, it never actually happened. Third world problem, that. I know, yeah. Being on a ship for three weeks, oh no. No, so we, yeah, we looked like a seven <laughs> night and an eight night, but they changed the eight night. No, we were on an eight night, seven night, they changed the seven night to a 14 night. And then we'd, we would have been on there for three weeks, but they... Um... All for the same price, as your one week? No, it would have been two weeks. But then, yeah, it would have been... Yeah, for three weeks, we would have got it for two weeks. 
Yeah, but it never actually happened due to COVID, unfortunately. But yeah, little, little story. <laughs> That completes our news and my first news. I hope I wasn't too shabby. If you could leave the a like, I'd be very grateful. And don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you fancy leaving a comment as well, then we'd be very grateful. And we'll see you guys in the next video. And <laughs> thank you to my members, Cruising for One, and my dad is very much appreciated. Thank you very much for being my members. If you want to find out all about that Shipface crew, link will be in the description below. Definitely go and check that out. Thank you so much for watching. It's been Shipface here, and I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>